Whether it involves cycling through the towns and hamlets of Europe as a young university student in England, playing a game of tennis, teaching botany to students at UE, writing his weekly column in the Express, or belaboring a case in the Senate for proper agricultural development, John Spence has always been the consummate gentleman, imbued with an acumen and a tenaciousness that have no doubt enriched his 81 years. So the picture I have of him is somebody who is very effective but with a kind of grace and, 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 and in a gentle, gentlemanly manner that, it, that is very much out of style. I, I, I thoroughly enjoy my time with him. Senior counsel Martin Daly has at least two things in common with Professor Spence. One is that they both served as independent senators over the same period. The other is that they both became newspaper columnists following their service in the upper house. Professor Spence has been a columnist with the Trinidad Express since 2002, two years after he left the Senate. And his columns have continued to reflect the same passion for properly planned agricultural development that he uncompromisingly exhibited in the Senate. Whether or not his voice is like one crying in the wilderness, Professor Spence simply labors on, his tenaciousness unshaken. He's very tenacious, and I learned from him and, and also from um, Professor Kenny, although he served a much shorter time than Professor Spence, that really to get anything changed, you have to repeat and repeat and drum it in and drum it in. And sometimes you only see results after you've left. People see the light after you've left. I wouldn't say it's a damper, no. You, you just become very realistic about the fact that you have to keep drumming it in and drumming it in and drumming it in. And, and he was very good at that without being boring. He was able to be tenacious without being boring. So that's another one of his qualities. That the name Professor John Arnott Spence occupies a proud place in the halls of honor at his alma mater, Queen's Royal College in Port of Spain, testifies to an impressive list of awards, citations, qualifications, and scientific achievements that this native-born Vincentian went on to amass in his rich lifetime. One of the longest-serving independent senators in the Trinidad and Tobago Senate, Professor Spence is the holder of the Shikonia Medal Gold, awarded to him in 1980. He also has to his name the prestigious John Simon Gunningheim Fellowship Award, was elected Fellow of the Caribbean Academy of Sciences, was conferred Professor Emeritus status by the University of the West Indies in 1996, holds the Neehurst Lifetime Achievement Award in Agriculture, and is an honorary life member of the Agricultural Society of Trinidad and Tobago. Among his numerous functions in the field of agriculture at the University of the West Indies, Professor Spence has been at one time or the other head of the Cocoa Research Unit, Professor of Botany, Dean of the Agricultural Faculty, and the head of the Department of Plant Sciences and Biochemistry. He has also served as a plant pathologist at the Ministries of Agriculture, both in Trinidad and Tobago and Guyana was head of the sub-regional headquarters of the UN Economic Commission for Latin America, consultant to the Inter-American Development Bank on Agricultural Research for the Caribbean, member of the International Board for Plant Genetic Resources in Rome, and a member of the United States Academy of Sciences Committee on Managing Global Genetic Resources. Professor Spence spent 14 years in the Senate, one of his three successive five-year terms having been cut short when the then Prime Minister Patrick Manning called early general elections in 1995, one year before it was due. However, that very year, Professor Spence would be recalled to duty in the Senate following the election to office of the new UNC administration. He was appointed by two different presidents, first by Sir Ellis Clark, and then by Mr. Noor Hassan Ali, and Mr. Hassan Ali repeated me again. Professor Spence was born in St. Vincent in 1929. He came to Trinidad during World War II when his father, Percival, was transferred by the Colonial Office
to take up duties in the port of Spain as comptroller of imports and exports. During the war, there was limited space on the ships. So there had to be a complete control system for everything that was imported and everything that was exported. They had to have a license for everything. Indeed, um, my first introduction to politics in inverted commas, my father was on the legislative council oh. as an ex-officio member, <laughs> as, as, as treasurer. <laughs> and uh, so as a little fellow, I remember the riots in 1937 in St. Vincent when they started. And uh, he was an alleged crew at that time. One memorable event he recalls as a teenager in Trinidad is a meeting with Dr. Eric Williams prior to his becoming chief minister and eventually prime minister of Trinidad and Tobago. When Eric Williams first came out to the Caribbean Commission as a teenager, I remember this very well, my father invited him home because he was an outstanding Trinidadian just to, to, and they just talked and I was allowed to listen in as a young child. I didn't say anything but I was allowed to listen to this conversation on, on, um, before he went into politics, you know, when he first came out to the Caribbean Commission. Immediately upon the transfer of his father to Trinidad, the young John Spence was admitted to Queen's Royal College, also the alma mater of Dr. Williams, and respected as one of the premier educational institutions in the then colony. Spence spent five years at QRC before leaving for the University of Bristol in England where in 1951, he would take the Bachelor of Science in Botany with honors. He went on to gain a diploma in Agricultural Science at the University of Cambridge in 1952, and a diploma in Tropical Agriculture in 1953 from the then Imperial College of Tropical Agriculture at St. Augustine, forerunner of the University of the West Indies. In 1956, John Spence married the former Yolan Roberts of Woodbrook in Port of Spain, worked with the Ministry of Agriculture for a while, and then set off again for England. This time, he was accompanied by his wife and their first son, Malcolm. He returned to the University of Bristol and was awarded the Doctor of Philosophy degree in 1961. Refer to that as my most productive years. We left here, um, with one son and came back with three sons and a PhD. Wow. <laughs> his other two sons are Louis and Richard in that order. But notwithstanding his doctorate and the 37 years at UE which it precipitated, notwithstanding his many consultancies up and down the Caribbean, the numerous committees on which he sat in the name of agriculture, the good times and the bad times he experienced trying to champion that problem-ridden sector it is his three terms in the Senate, which perhaps gave him the greatest enjoyment. Yes, I, I would say that I enjoyed it. I, 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 you know, I, the, the group of people um, uh, on all three terms was a very amenable group. Um, you had differences within the chamber, but when you went into the lunchroom or the tea room, everybody mixed up there. We never had any difficulties of any sort in, in the Senate. The House was a different matter, but the Senate was certainly all right. Um, uh, and certainly I learned a lot from listening to the people, from having to study bills, uh, understand them, uh, and as I say, try to make um, suggestions for changes. Um, uh, even though you weren't a lawyer, you, you had to think of the right word in. Um, and, and, and I think my time at QRC helped in that regard. <laughs> Among the high points of Professor Spence's relatively long stint in the Senate was the decision by his eight fellow independent senators to select him as administrative leader of the independents. So the independents don't have any leader in the sense of a captain or a team leader because we're not a team. But it is necessary to have an administrative leader who makes arrangements for who speaks when and so on. And um, he performed that task very, very well. Um, and he did it with a certain graciousness. There, were nev there was never any friction his habit was to leave his seat and walk around the back, you know, the back railing and confer with us individually or in groups as may be necessary. It was all very, very easy. And I don't think we ever had a harsh word or dispute among the group as to what we were doing about any particular thing. The constellation I'm talking about is purely administrative. We never consulted on the merits of legislation or the merits of a motion. Um, that, that, that we never had that sort of consultation and indeed under his administrative leadership he made it plain He always made it plain that we would never consult about the merit so to speak of what was before the house um, Each one 
spoke and voted according to their individual views. Independent senators should not only make independent political parties, independent of each other, but free to do as they want, if they want to consult. For example, there was a, a suggestion recently from a recent president of the Senate that the independents should not go into caucus. It's quite wrong. If the independents want to caucus, they can caucus. But they must not in caucus in um, be so influenced by each other that they come up with some uh, position that no is uh, yes, yes. Um, you know, if, if they if they all happen to feel that they should be uh, that be, they should be no hanging, then they all should say so. But uh, if one doesn't, they shouldn't. The others shouldn't bully that one into. You know, it should be a completely free and independent. And that has been how it has been. That's how it's in my experience. Though his name has been so deeply linked to agriculture for so many years, Professor Spence has nurtured another passion, education. Five years ago, he acted on his concerns and founded the Education Discussion Group. The group consists of some 25 professionals in several related fields. Since its inception, its members have been meeting religiously each month here at the Spence's Trinity Tacarigua home to discuss major societal and other problems affecting the education system in Trinidad and Tobago. The objective of the group is to propose and foster vital changes in the educational structure that could lead to a better quality of life for citizens. To change the educational system, you have to change the people who run it. So it really is it's a chicken and egg situation, very difficult to break through. But I think you have to go on trying. Professor Spence has contributed some 50 studies to international scientific journals and has made a number of important contributions in scientific agricultural research involving such areas as the physiology of parasitism, crop physiology, and photosynthesis. He has also served as a member of the steering committee for the establishment of NEHERST, the National Institute of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology, and was a member of Nehers under the chairmanship of the then Prime Minister, the late Dr. Eric Williams. In addition to his considerable achievements in research and teaching, Professor Spence's 44 years experience in tropical agriculture includes partnerships in the cultivation of citrus and cocoa and ownership of a horticultural production unit and a small plant tissue culture laboratory. Professor John Arnold Spence and his wife, Yolen, have shared some 56 years of marriage. Mm -hmm.